Hi folks, it's William Everhart here with eLearning Uncovered. Now, over the last few weeks, I have been working on our latest publication, and that is the Adobe Captivate 2019 book. And while it's not quite ready to be released yet, it's coming up very, very soon. I ran into some scenarios while preparing some exercise files that go along with the book. And one of those scenarios was uh, cropping images. And I have heard this complaint for years uh, from students and other uh, Captivate users about the cropping features of Captivate. And I think really what it is, is that you have to understand how Captivate crops. It doesn't use uh, what I would call a live interface, like what we would use inside of something like Photoshop or even something like PowerPoint. So when we're cropping images in Captivate, we can't see that cropped image in relation uh, to the other elements on the slide. And I think that's what throws people off. So what I wanted to do here at the end of the year is put together a quick video tutorial on how I deal with the different cropping scenarios that I run into with Captivate. Now I call this first scenario cropping on the fly. And this is probably the most common uh, cropping method. So it's pretty much a two-step process. You place the image, you crop the image. All right, let's see what we get here. So if I go up here to the top and I insert my image, and I'm going to use this little laptop image here, I'm going to place it. Captivate places this actual size. So whatever those pixel dimensions are, that's what I'm going to get here. And now I can either scale this image or I can start cropping it. And what's going to happen here is typically a person is going to maybe do both of these items. So I'm going to just select the image. And then I'm just going to slide it over here to the right hand side of my slide. And what I'm looking at is this top border here and this side border. So what I want to do is just move this around just a little bit. And there we go. Now, I have a choice to make here. I obviously have to crop off some of the bottom here, but I may also want to crop off some of the side. But do I really need to crop it, or can I scale this image? So first, I'm going to try to scale it. I'll just go ahead and grab the lower left-hand corner here and just hold down my Shift key and scale this. And I'm going to scale it up to where it's about here. And now I get a nice even border around the top, right, and bottom edge. And it looks pretty good over here on the left, too. But as I look at this photograph, I decide that, well, you know, I don't like the tip of his shoe coming in here, maybe even this coat or this dress, whatever this is hanging on the wall back here. Uh, not big on that, especially the tip of the shoe. That's really just kind of throwing me off. So I'm going to crop this image. Now, if I crop it, a couple of things are going to happen here. It's going to keep the size of this image as it is because I've scaled it. But what it will do is when I crop it, it will recenter or rescale this image inside of that image area. And I think that's the part that's a real disconnect for folks. So let's see this in action. I'm going to select the photograph again. I'm going to go over here to properties and I'm going to click edit image. And so now what I'm going to do is I really I'm looking to get rid of the tip of that shoe. And so I'm going to click on the crop feature here. And if you wanted to, you could constrain the proportions, but I, I want to show you what happens if you don't use that feature. So if I don't use that feature, then I can come in and say, well, I just want to crop that off completely. Uh, that's perfect. But what's going to happen is when I tell this OK, notice that, well, look, back the back side of this image is getting cropped off, or the right-hand side here, it's getting cropped off. Now, that may work for you. I mean, maybe we could just reposition the content, maybe extend the text over a little bit, and that would work. But, you know, that is just one of those little nuances that I think a lot of people uh, get thrown off with when they first start working with Captivate. And so you just have to kind of keep that in mind. Now, if I undo that step, okay, and I go back and I edit that image again. So previously, all I did was just crop the left-hand side off. But what if I crop both vertically and horizontally, okay? So what if I come in and I grab this lower right-hand corner handle and I crop this in a little tighter, oh, let's say something closer to this, 
okay? I'm going to tell this okay. Now watch what happens. I still get a little bit of that resizing here on the right, but that image has been cropped to fit this container. It's still not a perfect fit. So there is a little bit of guesswork involved on this on the fly type of cropping. And, and like I said, I think this is the part that really just kind of puts people off about the cropping tool. But once you understand what it's doing, I, I think that's gonna help you a little bit in going forward here. On the fly cropping. We don't have a lot of control, but it's really easy to do. It's really quick to do. All right, let's take a look at the next scenario. So what I like to do is what I call cropping with guides. So this just kind of helps me figure out where I need to crop an image. And so in this case, I am going to put that image in here again. So I'm going to go over to my library and I'm going to grab the uncropped version of that image. I'm just going to drag and drop it in here. And there we have it. Now, let's say in this case, I want to do something a little different. Maybe I want to maybe make this image kind of take over this background where the red is. Maybe not completely. Leave a little red border on it. So what I would do is scale this up. Just hold the shift key as I scale that up. And let's just grab this top side here, scale this up. And that looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to pull this down a little bit like so. All right, so I've got the top and the two sides. Now I just need to crop the bottom. If you were to just grab the transform handle here, it would squish the image. Okay, so that's obviously not what we want to do. Instead, what I want to use is a guide to kind of help me determine where I need to crop this. Now to get your guide, you have to go to the view menu. And under view, you'll see show rulers. I'm going to go to the top ruler, the top horizontal ruler here. I'm going to click and hold in that ruler and drag down. That's going to bring out a little guide here. And I'm going to position this guide where I think the image needs to be cropped. So I'm just looking at this lower left-hand corner of the red border here and making sure that looks about like a little red square. So that to me, where that uh, blue guide is, that makes that look square, okay? So I know that in this image, I need to crop it so that I'm coming to the bottom of maybe this, whatever this is that the plant is sitting on, or right here, there is another little detail in the image, a little dark spot. I think that would be easy to find as well. So what we need to do is select the image, go over to Properties, and click edit the image. Once again, I'll go to crop. And this time I'm just cropping the bottom off, but now I have a better idea of where to crop that bottom. So I'll just pull the bottom handle up. And as I said, it needs to come right about here, about to the bottom of that little dark spot in the background or to the bottom of whatever this is the plant is sitting on. And that's really, really close. I think I'll work with that. Tell it okay, and sure enough, it crops it perfectly. Now, all I have to do is just send this to the back. There we go. So using the guides will help you look for little areas that are just kind of unique to that photograph. That'll help you determine where you have to crop to. All right, let's take a look at another scenario. Very, very common, and that is cropping to fit a placeholder. So in this situation, I have applied a layout, and part of that layout, there is this image placeholder. Now, I want to maintain consistency across my slides, so I'm using these master slides to help me do that. And so these placeholders help me do that because they are already in place. They're already sized. So let's take a look at that. If I double-click on this image placeholder... I can find in my library the laptop, and I'm going to use the uncropped version. So it just says laptop.jpg there. I'll tell that OK. Well, look at what's going on. It is squishing that image to fit as much of that image as it can inside of that image placeholder. So the image is getting distorted. Well, we obviously do not want that. 
But how do you fix it? Well, the way I like to do this is mathematically. So what I do is I come over here to the properties panel. I still have that image placeholder, or now it's just the image. I have that selected. And so right here, we have the style, and this is where we can edit this image. But right next to style are the options for this object. What I want to look at is the width and the height properties. I want to jot those two numbers down. And then I'm going to jump back over here to the style portion. And I'm going to click edit image. Well, I obviously want to crop this image again. So I'm going to go down here to where it says crop. I do not want to constrain the proportions because I'm going from a widescreen image to something that's more square. If you look in the lower left-hand corner of the crop dialog, it'll give you your original image size. In my case, that's 640 by 408. And then it's also going to give you your crop area. And right now that matches. It's 640 by 408. So all I have to do is move my crop handles to match the image placeholder original size out here. So I'm just going to grab the leftmost crop handle here. I'm going to drag that to the right until that first number there matches the number that I had, which is 282. And I'll tell you this, depending on the sensitivity of your mouse, this can be a little challenging to get, you know, dead on. But if you're within a pixel or two, you're going to be okay. So I'm at 283. I really needed to be at 282, but one pixel is not going to hurt anything. I'll do the same for either the top or the bottom crop handle here. I'm going to pull this down. This is going to be 314. There we go. And now I'm just going to click in the center of my crop area and just drag this out and just find the area that I want in my slide here. And I think this is it. That looks pretty good. I think I'm going to go up just a touch like so. That looks pretty good to me. Now, what I'm paying attention to is not only where it's being cropped, sure, but what is going to be the center of the attention here? Do I want something in particular in the center or do I want to position it in some way, shape or form? So I know I have these center handles here on the top, bottom, left and right. And so I'm kind of looking at those and drawing an imaginary center line here and just saying, OK, so the center point is going to be right here, just past his pinky. And for me, that's going to work. So I'll tell this OK. And just like magic, it scales that image up and fits it right inside of that container. All right. Now, the last scenario here that we're going to take a look at, this is going to give me the uh, what I like to say is the highest level of control. Um, I am going to place an image, but I'm going to put it inside of another container. Okay. So I'm going to start with a smart shape. And so if I go up here to my shapes and you can choose any of the shapes that you want, it'll work with any of them. Uh, but just to keep things simple here, I'm going to start with a rectangle. And what I'll do is I'm going to draw out a really large rectangle. I'm going to draw out one that pretty much takes over the whole slide. Based on my default settings for this particular project, it's going to fill this with a solid color of red. I'm just going to change that. Over here in my properties panel, the fill properties, it says solid. I'm going to click on that. And instead of a solid fill, I want it to be an image fill. Now, by default, it's going to fill it with kind of like a pattern. So the next property here is the actual fill property itself. What color or what object is going to be inside that container. And you can see we have all these little pattern textures in here that we can put in there. But we can also put in a custom image. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to click on this little folder icon here. Once again, I'm going to select the laptop.jpg. Now, this first one here is the original image. It's the uncropped version. So that's the one I want. I'll select it, tell it OK. Now, by default, what this is doing is tiling that image. So it starts in the upper left-hand corner, places the image. If the container is larger than the image, well, it will just repeat that image. And that's what we're seeing here. 
So I'm going to go right back over here to that fill property again. I'm going to turn off tile, and now it's going to switch to a stretch mode. And you may be able to get this to work for you, but basically it is just distorting that image either vertically or horizontally so that it will fill that container. Okay. In my case, that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to turn that feature off as well. So now it's just taking that image, placing it dead center of this uh, shape that I have and just leaving it there actual size. It's not scaling it. It's not doing anything else to it. And that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to click back over here in the properties panel just to dismiss that window. And then I'm going to go out here and I am going to select my smart shape corner handle here. And then I'm going to just draw that down. And notice what it's doing. It's keeping that image in the center of this smart shape. So what I will do is I will uh, maybe adjust the height here. Maybe adjust the right edge here a little bit. Pull that in so it matches my header up here. And then I'm going to drag the bottom up here just a little bit as well. There we have it. My image is still full size and it's being cropped, if you will, by the smart shape. Now, if for some reason I wanted to fine tune this just a little bit, what I can do is I can go over here to the fill property again. And right here, I have a little blue pencil. Now, this is like the edit image button that we saw in the other scenarios. So I'm going to click on this and it's going to open up that same resize crop image dialog box. And so maybe what I want to do is maybe I want to have the image of his hands here. Maybe I want this to be a little bit over to the left a little more or maybe over to the right a little more. It really just kind of depends on the layout. If I were to say, come over here into the crop dialog box, choose the crop option, make sure constrained proportions is off. And then I were to resize this crop box. Okay. I'm just going to set it back to the original size. I want his hands. Oh, let's say over to the right a little bit more. I'm going to grab the center crop handle on the right side of the image, and I'm just going to pull that in a little bit, maybe about to the edge of the briefcase here. Okay. And I'm going to tell this, okay. Now, what I want you to do is pay attention to the image in the background. Watch what happens when I hit okay. Boom. It just slid it over. It's still centering this image, but because I cropped off a little bit of that right edge, it moved the whole image over to the right just a little bit. Pretty cool, right? So I hope that this video has helped to illustrate the fact that well, cropping images inside of Captivate doesn't have to be a real chore, but you do have to know kind of what's going on in the background. For the most part, you can get away with the uh, cropping on the fly, just placing image, resizing, and then cropping from there. But some of these other techniques, like the guides and cropping with the smart shape, I think that will really up your cropping game, if you will. It gives you a lot more control. Yeah, you have to put a little more effort into it in the beginning, but boy, the results really do speak for themselves. Well, that's a wrap on not only this video, folks, but for the year. I mean, 2018 has been an amazing year for us here at eLearning Uncovered, and you guys were a part of that, and we want to say thank you. I can't wait to uh, show you what we have coming up in 2019. I mean, we've got some really cool stuff uh, coming up, and we'll be talking about that very, very soon. So until next time, my friends, stay curious.